スタンダードアップバンガード Within the dark depths of the dark zone, there were a band of cults that performed a demonic ritual to grant themselves immeasurable powers. But they got more than they wished for. While the ritual was underway, a dark energy emerged and sucked the life force out of the cults in its own, and with a flash, there stood a new, mighty demon. Created from dark magic and their own life force, they brought a new terror into the world. They summoned Demonic Deep Phantasm Emperor Brufus. Brufus is Dark Regular's latest secret weapon. They will deploy on the battlefields of Kray. This demon absorbs the power of any dare to stand in its way, may it be friend or foe. By doing this, it can grant himself insane amounts of power to overwhelm any opposition. Brufus' first ability allows him once per turn to search his deck for any card which up to three copies and if you have another copy of that card in your soul, you can add one of them to hand and the rest goes into the soul. This is great to increase the soul count and add more cards in hand and also deck fin very effectively. And all that for a single counter blast. This ability is also a great setup and ties really well into the new support for dark regulars. Rufus second ability allows him to absorb a unit that's onto the field into its own being. You retire the unit and Brufus gains its power and criticals. The ability activates whenever Brufus attacked and you have two great freeze in your soul. Important thing is that this skill is mandatory. When you have two great freeze in your soul, so if your opponent's field is empty, you must absorb one of your own. Brufus is a very powerful VR that can threaten any player, but at the same time it's an excellent setup card for future plays with his selective soul charging. Demons are always attractive to powerful dark energy, meaning Brufus is a central hub for demons and dark entities alike. And within this group, he has found powerful minions. One of his most promising mans is Emblem Master. This card is not only a solid beater and defender, as he is a 14k beater and 10k interceptor in almost all games, but he has a similar skill like Brufus, as he can soul charge up to 3 copies of a unit you have on the field. He can set up just as cleanly as Brufus, where Brufus can fill the soul and get a copy in hand of a card that was soul charged Emblem Master can fill the soul with all copies of a card you have in hand, meaning the only place you can set up a card from is when they are in your damage zone. Was it not for Varian's Killer Till? This card can put any card from the damage zone as well as drop zone into your soul, meaning you can chain it with Brufus to get a copy to hand and fill the soul even more. What's even better is this card's cost is resting the unit, and if you have multiple copies in the soul, you can even restand her and counter charge one if you soul charge one from the damage zone. This card synergizes perfectly with Brufus and Emblem Master, and together they can set up the deck without any problem, and you have almost in infinite counter blast. Another card that works really well with Brufus and Emblem Master is Were Tiger Jaeger. This card binds itself from the soul to draw a card, meaning if you're low on hand size or you are missing key pieces, this can help you dig deeper into your deck. This card can also put himself into the soul whenever it's retired, meaning it's a solid target for Brufus in a worst case scenario. You can also guard with it and even when your opponent cleared your field. Sadly, going one for one in terms of counter blast and draws isn't all that great. But if we use Brufus or Emblem Master, we can shove three copies for a single counter blast, meaning we effectively created a skill that fins the deck for free and draws another free card for a single counter blast. Another important unit is Yellow Bolt. This allows Dark Regulars not only to have a solid beater at all times, but it gives the clan some extra soul charge capabilities. During the mid to late game, it can soul charge every time it attacks, meaning every turn you will increase your soul count without wasting resources. And when you can ride on top of him, you can soul charge too, and in the case you hit a trigger, you get to draw one for free. So no matter what happens, you get a beneficial effect out of this card. Depending on your build, this card can be the only non-controlled soul charge. And with the added bonus that you get a draw, if you hit a trigger, means you won't have a bad feeling of soul charging triggers during the game. Currently, we talked about a lot of setup cards that soul charge a lot of cards with multiple copies of a card into your soul. 
Now let's take a look where this is all for. The first one is Variant's Hard Leg. This card gives all your attacks the Super Battle Dora skill or the Spinning Valiant skill. The moment it's placed onto the field and you have free cards with free copies of this card in your soul. So that means when you have free sets of free in your soul, your opponent needs to guard with free cards each and every time. So to use a perfect guard, it will cost them four cards from hand. The final piece of the puzzle is Hope on Damp. This card has a more traditional condition, but a very unorthodox skill. This card, when placed onto the field and you have 20 cards in soul, your opponent can only guard in intervals of 20k original shield value. So the value that is physically written on the cards. This effect forces your opponent to do some really awkward guarding as they need to place 20k shield every single time. So if they need to guard for 30k, they need to place 20k twice. And this is where Variant Hard Lag can come in, as when you combine the two, you can eliminate any kind of hope as your opponent is forced to guard in intervals of 20k, but also those 20k's need to be made with at least 3 cards each. So without perfect guards, they are dead. And even if they have them, they can be in a scenario where they can't even use them. So the entire deck accumulates into one of these cards, or maybe even both. Dark Regulars doesn't have a resource issue as their only skills that uses resources are Counter Blast skills. And with Killer Till, you can sustain it without much trouble. So try to set up for her and protect her as with her on the field, they can damage and eye you as one Counter Blast is all you need to advance your game state. Trigger lineup is very simple. Crits, crits and loads of crits. You can plus all right in this build, but more importantly, use soul charge pretty hard. So having too much draws can be a problem. Also with all the deck finning, meaning hitting those crits will be all the more devastating, especially with those nasty guard restrictions in place. Unlike most protect decks, Dark Regulars can use both. Dark Regulars doesn't tend to rewrite a lot, and with cards like Master Fifth Element and Beaters and Strong Interceptors as Emblem Master, gives you more value when going for Protect 2. But Protect 1 gives the option to run more crits without feeling downside of sacrificing our draw PGs. It also helps towards NOK okay as we get an extra card in our hand. Now that we know the basics, let's jump into the actual list. And as always, let's start with one we can build straight out of the box. This build has the main support line where you play Brufus, Emblem Master, Yellow Bolt, and Killer Tail to set up for your other cards like Shutarm, Rigor Twister, or Killer Tail herself. Or even your finishers like Hope on Damp and Farian's Hard Lag. We do have some unfamiliar faces. We have Rigor Twister. This is a great free that can become a 27k unkillable beater during either player's turn, meaning you have a very powerful sticky minion on the field. What's also nice is that it can't even die of your effects, meaning you can target it with Brufus, and Brufus gains its 27k and critical without killing it. Also, if it's on a Protect 2, you gain the extra 5k as well. Another beater that we have is Variant Shot Arm. This can be a solid 23k column boosted by Yellow Bolt, and with some setup, she can act as an extra spot removal too. And lastly, we have the PGs. Yes, it's just an ordinary PG, but her Vanguard skill has another function in this deck, as the card we discard can be a perfect target for Killer Tail, so we can even set up potential future plays as well. Now that we have seen the basics in action, let's take a look at the more streamlined list that has access to the old support. This build has a much more profound and established endgame. It still uses the same engine pieces to set up for your soul, for other cards, as well as your kill condition. But this build focuses more on Farian's hard lag, guard restriction in combination with strong multi attackers Our endgame focuses around the older cards, No Life King, Master Fifth, Doreen the Thruster, but also Icicle Resistant. What we want to establish is 13 cards in soul with free sets of free when we go into our kill turn because we finish by having NOK as our vanguard when we place a hard lag onto the field. NOK allows us to have an extra vanguard attack meaning another attack they need to waste free cards for. By going into master fifth we can make things even more devastating because we now have the free extra vanguard attack thanks to NOK but by resolving master fifth we can generate another vanguard attack and potentially two extra rearguard attacks. And all of them have the supercharged battle door a guard restriction. Meaning to guard all the attacks, they need to waste 21 cards in hand without using a PG. Also, don't forget our last two Vanguard attacks swing with two crits. The only problem is the fact that our attacks might be too weak that they won't hit 
or defensive trigger stops them. But this is where the following cards comes into play. Doreen the Thruster is a great early game card that with all the soul charging as she gains a lot of power and can pressure your opponent pretty hard. But during the late game, just by resolving an okay, she gains 20k, meaning she will hit for 26 without doing anything extra or without hitting triggers. But we also have Icicle Resistant. This card can be used to increase our rear guards with some extra power just to make sure they hit over anything. And last but not least, we have Protect 2 to increase our unit's base power. In most cases, you will generate free, so you can increase a unit by 10k and the other by 5k if you want to split the power. Also the reason why we run only one of Master 5th, because no matter where he end up, we can put him into soul through different means. As by the time you're going to kill your opponent, you probably have already pulled him from the deck. Usually I will have a third list available, but sadly for Brufus, there isn't much in terms of different playstyle tactics. You're mainly focused on soul charging multiple copies of a card to set up kill turns, and your choices will I go for Farian's Hard Lag, Master 5th, or Hope on Damp, or a combination of the three. And most of this is made possible thanks to No Life King. The other reason why much difference in the list isn't possible with the current card pool for Brufus is the fact that his mechanic forces you to run 4 offs to make everything work. That also hampers with the ability to change playstyles. But nonetheless, this is a very powerful and fun deck to play. This deck is one of the more consistent engines we have thanks to cards like Killer Tail and Emblem Master. But you need to be careful when building and piloting Brufus because you need to respect his skill condition in order to make it work. Demons of the underworld flock to the surface to find the source of a disturbing amalgamation of demonic essence. At its core they find this monstrous demonic creature that annihilates all that stands before him. Four kings are dead. Bow before your new emperor. And that's the entire spotlight. If you're hungry for more content and you want to see more Vanguard centric videos, why not subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to be updated for more videos as we have a lot more in store for the upcoming weeks and days ahead of us. But in the meantime, I want to thank my Patreon supporters for making this video possible and everything that's happening on the channel. If you do want to support us, you can do that directly by going to patreon.com slash Insider and become a dedicated Patreon as well. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap and I'll see you guys in the next one.